Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're going to be doing um, uh, lecture 12, and I'm going to try and um, do what you are looking at here, because you will see that the first one is actually, um, 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 it says ISLMBP model. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the impact of increasing government spending and then we will look at increasing in, in money supply. And then I will leave the last two. So I'll leave this one here. I'll leave this one here as well for you to go and try at home. Because now when you do this one, it's going to be the opposite of uh, this other one, of the other ones. So what I'm going to do is, guys, you know, like when every time when there is a change either to money supply or to money um, uh, 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 or to government expenditure, then there will be a change either to ILM to, I, to IS or to LM cap, and then and then and then and then now balance of payment will no longer be in equilibrium. But that balance of payment um, uh, disequilibrium will correct itself until we get back to the balance of payment equilibrium. So I hope that you will do this lecture and then you will repeat it many times until you understand what we are actually doing here. So what I will start by doing is remember, we will first have them, if they say shock, any shock, it can be sort of government expenditure increasing. Now, remember, that is what is going to happen. We will have the primary effect and then we will have the secondary effect. And then what is going to happen now is that what is going to happen now is that um, your balance of payment will be either surplus or will be either deficit. Now, guys, remember that we will have to explain the primary effect of any change and we have to explain the secondary effect of any change and then we will have to explain the balance of payment, whether is surplus or deficit. And then we have to explain the balance of payment, whether is deficit or whether is a surplus. But remember that if your balance of payment is deficit, it means money supply is going down. And if it's negative, it means that money supply is going is going um, uh, 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 up. Now, after this now, we will now have the initial effect on the balance of payment, which goes via money supply. So now we have to explain the money supply from here, from the balance of payment. And then we will have the concluding effect on the balance of payment and then which goes via exchange rate. So now here we'll talk about what? About the rent, whether, whether it appreciates or depreciates. So then you must remember and then you must look at this because these kind of questions, they are very long questions and then we want you to do each and every step. So we want you to go through all these steps and then, and then, and then please guys, Pay attention when I do them. So, so this was our page one of lecture twelve, and then, and then, and then, and then now we are at page two of this lecture twelve. And what is happening now here is I'm going to draw the diagram, and this is the output, and then this is the interest rate. So remember, we said this case now government expenditure increases. So we have to start at the primary effect and then the secondary effect. And, 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 and please, guys, look at what I'm doing here. This is your IS cap, and I'll, I'll write IS1. And then this is your LM cap, and I'll write LM1. And then this is your BP cap, and I'll write BP1. So therefore, we've got equilibrium 1. Right. So what we know now is that Government expenditure increases. So we see government expenditure going up. And 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 and, and I'm just going to explain this. Government expenditure going up, and then the total expenditure is going to go up, 
and then the output is going to go up. So now remember I said secondary effect, you say as output goes up, therefore people demand more money, demand for money goes up, and then interest rate is going up. But when the interest rate goes up, there will be two branches. The first one is that the real investments, which is I, is going to go down. But the other one is the financial side. We've got the inflow of funds from other countries where they deposit money to our country. Right. Let me see what is happening here. So, I mean, so now you can continue here. You can also continue here. Because you know that if this is happening now, we will have if this is happening now, we will have the balance of payment surplus because these guys are coming into the country that bring money to our country. And now, because our financial account overwhelms the current account, therefore, this is what is going to prevail. So every time the financial account is the one that prevails because in this case, we are talking about a good economy. Now, the balance of payment in this case is going to be surplus. Why? Because the financial account is bringing money into the country. And let's see what happens. So I'll go back here. And when, I, when I'm here now, I say, government Twitter increases, and then this one shifts to the left. Can you see now where the equilibrium 2 is? Equilibrium 2 is here. So now you can see that this point here, E2, is actually above the BP curve. And, and and now we've got IS2. So now that this is the surplus I'm talking about. So you can see the surplus we're talking about here is already reflecting there. Now, what is happening now is that we're going to now look at the initial effect on the balance of payment. And then remember, the first one now is the initial effect. It goes via money supply. But now this supply means money supply increases. So if money supply increases, it tells you that this one now will shift LM to the right. So now I'm going back to the diagram and I shift LM to the right a little bit. Now I've got LM2. So now look what is happening here now. Now we are at E3. Now look at E3 now it is approaching. So now it is actually reducing the surplus. But when money supply increases now we know what is going to happen i mean we know the interest rate is going to go down and then we know that when interest rate goes down now we have two changes the first one now investment is going to go up the other one now is that we're going to go have the outflow of of funds now you can reason you can reason up to going going up now what is going to happen now is that now we see that now LM shifted to the right. So let's look at the concluding effect. The concluding effect of the balance of payment. Now what is happening now here is it goes via the exchange rate. So now we see that the balance of payment here is surplus. So which means the rent will appreciate. Now we see the appreciation of the rent. Now appreciation of the rent now it means what? It means that now it is difficult for us to sell things to people in other countries. So what we are seeing now, we see exports going down and we see imports going up. Therefore, the net export is going down. So therefore, now, remember when the exports are going down, it affects IS curve because you remember that from the previous lectures. But it also affects the BP curve because BP curve is about, the, about this uh, 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 curve. Now, what is happening now is we are saying here that um, in this case, what we are seeing is because exports are going down, IS is going to shift to the left and BP is also shift to the left. It's going to shift to the left. So now IS shifting to the left. Now we see IS shifting a little bit here. Now we have E4, which is here. But LM must shift to, but BP must also shift to the left. So therefore, BP is also shifting to the left. And then now all of them now put BP2 here. And now all of them now they intersect here at E4. And then the equilibrium now is 
is we are back at equilibrium now. That this equilibrium now is being um, corrected. Okay, let me now quickly go to um, page three. And here I'm going to look at the increase in money supply. And what we are seeing now is we've got output, we've got this, we've got that. And this is your IS. This is your LM. And then I'll just put one, one. And then this is your BP, one. And then we've got the equilibrium point, one here. So if money supply increases, the first thing that now, now we, we, we first explain the primary effect. So if money supply increases, the first thing is that money supply is going up. Therefore, now interest rate will go down. Therefore, now when interest rate changes always, we've got the two effects. The first one now is that investments will go up. And then when investment goes up, we know that the output will go up as well. But this side now, we will have the outflow of funds. Therefore, now here it means the balance of payment definitely is going to be what? It's going to be deficit because what is going to happen now is, 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 is that um, outflow of funds money is leaving the country. But because now you see this one is now, the outflow of funds is happening now here. Therefore, we will end up with the point below here so let me see now secondary effect now we go and take it from the income look at the income there now we say income decreased therefore money demand will have to decrease as well and then the interest rate will have to to go down and then now we have another outflow of funds and then now here investment is going up, but ultimately here we should end up with what? With balance of payment deficit. Now, what is happening here now is that we, we're now going to say the balance of payment is going to be in deficit. But when we now draw it on the diagram, we say this is the diagram, money supply increases, We've got LM2. So now we've got equilibrium 2. And then when we have the equilibrium point 2 here, we now have, we are, we are fine now. We've got that there. So we can explain our initial effect on balance of payment. And we can explain our concluding effect on balance of payment. So on our initial effect on balance of payment, we are going to say we've got deficit here. Therefore, money supply is going to decrease. So if money supply decreases, if money supply decreases, then we have um, we have um, now we say we have LM shifted to the left, and then I'm just going to shift it to the left here a little bit, and we've got LM three here, but now we can reduce our deficit here, and then you can reason this one going up, it's not it's the same as that one, and then. With this one here, we say now the rent will be stronger. Mm -hmm. And if the rent is stronger now, we say the rent, sorry, will, the rent will be weaker, will depreciate. And if the rent depreciates, what we are seeing here now is that we are seeing that now your IS is going to shift to there right because exports are increasing and imports are decreasing so therefore now we see is shifting to the right now we are at point e4 but the bp must also shift to the to the right now we've got bp2 here as well but now the equilibrium is being corrected so i want you to go and revise these things 
and then do the last two. So in that case, I thank you very much.